I remember I had a teacher, uh, a guy named Sean Benjamin, who really like changed my career and my life. And he told me that it takes a hundred auditions before you book that first one. And yeah. that really stood true. Cause it, man, did it take a lot of auditions for me to get that first one. I started to feel yeah. like, Hey, you know, maybe <laughs> I'll just never get a role through auditioning. Maybe I Was it hard for you to be the villain of the show basically? I think I'm, I've really trained my brain to like find empathy for every character I play. Do you feel that same way? Like this is like probably the best era for young black actors but i don't know if we fully value it maybe the way that we should just because we're in it you know it's, it's yeah. really tough to to value something at its fullest when you're living in it you're i mean you're just kind of spoiled by nature right hey guys i'm grand hall actor from Gronish, and you're now tuning into swap sessions From the bio, I read that you were raised in a house full of athletes like myself um, mm -hmm. until you got into acting in college. So before we get to the acting part, what was that? What was that childhood like? What kind of sports did you end up playing because of the athletic family? Uh, well, I just want to say it's an honor to be doing this with you. Um, <laughs> I'm grateful to be having this conversation, man. But uh, absolutely. Uh, to answer your question, uh, it was it was definitely. A little bit difficult you know there was there was high standards in my family especially when it came to athletics and um they were just kind of like um you kind of were just born in, into like pe people kind of just expected you to be a certain caliber of athlete i guess you could say and um right. just trying to like live up to those shoes was probably at the time i think it was a little hard but now i think i'm kind of grateful for it because it taught me how to like deal with pressure and um you know like overcoming people's opinions and just um, I guess it's trying to get the best out of myself. Yeah. Was it, at what point did you stop playing sports or have you ever, did you ever stop? I mean, I guess I still play sports, you know, I'm not playing it every day for a job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I also don't really want to be, um, yeah. uh, I, I still play, you know, I still play for fun. I still play in like leagues and teams and stuff. So I guess that'll yeah. probably never stop. I, I love competition. So. I, it's like a drug and I, I kind of need it, you know? Understood. I I fully understand. So the crazy thing, like I played, I think just about every sport growing up, um, football, basketball, baseball were like the main ones. Um, but I was also like a band nerd. So <laughs> I was more concerned with like being in band than playing the sport. And that's kind of like how I was able to get my exit out. So it was, a fortunate kind of way to to kind of quit but it's still the same thing i love i love playing regardless mm -hmm. you never so, really like nah. lose that love nah no 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 now i have uh my nephews are in high school and they're uh six four six five and six seven and their thing now is like you know i'll dunk on you it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's never gonna happen like i'm not i'm not allowing it like it's just you, you'll get a kick or a, a, a hit, a punch yeah. in the stomach before that happens, I'll, right? I'll, I'll pull you out of the air. It's not, it's not happening. I'll pull you out of the air. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just a full bear hug. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work. But I, I love. They have that same competitive nature, though. You know what? I got a little brother now who was always smaller than me until about two or three years ago, and he's now six four, um, and I'm six foot. Just to give people some perspective. Um, yeah, and he probably could dunk on me. <laughs> but that will never happen. No, you, know, you can't I just, let it happen. I, I can't allow. It. I, I mean, how can I be the big brother if you've dunked on me? Yeah, and you know? they don't even they don't they don't just dunk. They try to like dunk and embarrass. So it's just like that's yeah. the reason why it can't happen. Um, so it's just <laughs> no, it's it's not it's not happening at all. It, it just can't happen. It can't happen. Period. Mm -hmm. Um, when you. When you went to college, what did you, what did you major in when you decided to go to school? Um, so I originally was actually my first degree that I was planning on um, kind of like um, embarking on was criminal justice. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
that idea quickly changed. But um, <laughs> that, that was the initial one. Um, yeah. And, okay. uh, and then I switched it over to business and then it became all about acting. But business gotcha. and acting kind of, you know, intertwine. So yeah, they they flow together. I don't know. I don't know about. The, I don't know where the criminal justice part came in at. Um, <laughs> so that <laughs> I'm sorry. Where did the criminal justice part come in? Like, how did that even become a yeah. thing? Just trying to search for something that was like kind of like out of the norm. And I also grew up as like a very, you know, uh, athletics was a big part of my childhood. I like being physical, so I didn't want a job where you know it was like nine to five at the office at the cubicle. I just yeah, that wasn't me, and, and never has been. So I was like, okay, well, if it's not sports, what's something that can allow me to be you know physical? And I was like, well, you know, maybe law enforcement. So I hopped into that, and yeah. but and they were talking about getting people ready to be in like a, a large group of officers sent to Chicago. And I was like, nah, you know what? Actually, I, I think I'm a switch. <laughs> You know what? I'm good. I don't. I don't think this is for me. Yeah, I don't think this is for me. Was crazy. I wanted to be a. I wanted to be a criminal psychologist, mm. um, and I wanted to be. I wanted to have like the badge and the gun because I watched New York Undercover growing up, and I thought it was like the coolest thing to run around with like a badge around your neck and a gun on your waist. I thought yeah. that was dope. Um, so I was like, <laughs> criminal psychology. Let's go for it. And I was game until I watched Silence of the Lambs. And I was like, yo, I was like, I don't want to deal with that. Like, that's another kind of crazy that I don't need to have in my life. We're cool. Switch this to music. <laughs> like, let, let me let me guess which uh, which scene it was that did it for you. It was ahead. when she got to the house and she was about to walk in. Was it that one? Yeah. And and she had to because, you know, she was an officer. I remember watching yeah. that. Like, Man, what? Yeah. Why do that? And the I was answer like, nah. was, oh. He was like, she, no, he was like, it, it puts the lotion in the bucket. I was like, I'm, I'm good, bro. I don't need to go to people like you. It's, it's a different level of crazy. Agreed. So agreed. How did you, you end up in a theater production? Mm -hmm. um, how does that randomly happen? So I had a teacher. Um, the whole like stream of events that kind of happened to inspire to lead me into a career in acting was just crazy. Um, mm -hmm. And it's hard to even kind of like break it down. But around the time where I was like the thought had came to me that I needed to get into acting, uh, I had a theater appreciation teacher. And um, it was like the first day of class. She was going around doing attendance for like a pretty large class. And uh, she got to me and she just like stopped, kind of like stared at me. And I was at that time, I was I wasn't too comfortable like public attention. I was a little shy. Um, yeah. I was like, you know, kind of concerned. I'm like, what's going on? And um, maybe after a couple of seconds of staring, she was just like, I think you have the perfect face for TV and film. And then I, my mind was just kind of like it would just feel like the moment of fruition. And like yeah. at that moment, it was like God telling me what I was supposed to be doing. And um, from there. She she got me into a couple of theater productions, um, the first one being uh, a musical theater production. It was The Wizard of Oz. And um, so that was the first one. Yeah. And she and she got me into like an improv group, man. And, and that was really fun because I've always loved kind of like performing. I've always loved entertainment. So once yeah. I did the first one was a live improv event. So once I did that, I was like, OK, I think I think I might have found my niche here. Yeah. Yeah. And improv is hard. People don't. Oh man, is it? People don't give it the credit that it needs. It's to stay on task. It's hard. And it's I'm, hard. yeah, I, I I break. So it's <laughs> it's just it's not. I'm gonna laugh. I, I'm just I'm the person. If it was doing like an actual film, I'm gonna uh, mess it up. Like I'm gonna use all the film. Like it's my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I get fired for breaking scenes. So uh, I, I feel you. I feel you. It, it it takes practice for sure. Oh, it takes yeah. It's it's a lot of practice and a lot of a lot of dedication as well. Mm. Um, very true. You go through you go through that. And you get to a point where you're actually doing productions for like student films, um, television. Mm -hmm. How does how does the career transition from live improv to here's a script there's a camera action 
it was long journey. Um, so I was at school in Illinois at the time when I decided to start acting and put my focus okay. on uh, TV and film, despite the fact that I was doing theater and stuff. That was I kind of just at the time just like labeled it like my training ground. And I was gotcha. like, okay, I'm doing this right now, but I really want to get to, you know, the silver screen. I want to get to films and TV and stuff. And um, so I got a manager. There was a lady who wanted to rep me and my older brother in modeling since we were young. And she also like handled like, you know, small town actors. It was in Ohio. So it wasn't like an LA agent or anything. But, okay. um, but she, we ended up like joining her management company and um, she ended up bringing me and my brother out to LA. And then, you know, I started going to classes out here. I went to film school for a little bit. Um, and then, you know, we, there was also directors like attached to this film school that I was going to. So started doing, you know, short films with them and kind of like building up my reel and just going from there. Nice. Was the point where you, where you actually get that first job, um, you know, because that's when everybody says like they not necessarily made it, but it's like I have my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. So when you when you get that that first job, how long is it before the next one? Are you asking about the first one? Yeah. Man, I, it was a minute. It, it, it was definitely a minute. But even just to get the first one took a minute because um. I remember I had a teacher, uh, a guy named Sean Benjamin, who really like changed my career and my life. And he told me that it takes 100 auditions before you book that first one. And yeah. that really stood true because it, man, did it take a lot of auditions for me to get that first one. I started to feel yeah. like, hey, you know, maybe <laughs> I'll just never get a role through auditioning. Maybe I'll, <laughs> I got to figure like, out. Like, so about that criminal justice thing. Like, this yeah, might be, yeah. <laughs> Ain't too late to go back to baseball. <laughs> but I think I think that's the that's the beautiful part of what you all do as actors. Um, there's a lot of resilience that has to happen and be a part of just your fundamental being, because there's a lot of there's a lot of no's, there's a lot of rejection, there's a lot of you know get back up, dust yourself off, and go to the next one to the point where. I've interviewed people and they say that they've gone to um, auditions, do the audition and be like, yeah, it's over with and throw it in the back of their head and then just think that they're not going to get it and just moving on to the next thing. And then when they get a call back, it's like, wait, which one is this? Like, what, what did I audition for? And they don't, you don't remember because you're doing so many. Um, mm -hmm. So to, to stay consistent and stay dedicated to what you want, I think you guys have probably the, strongest will um of of careers because i don't think anyone gets as much rejection as actors do mm, that's that's a very valid point a very which i think kind of goes unnoticed sometimes because people typically only see the finished product so yeah. like they don't they have no like comprehension of what goes on behind the scenes and how much work it takes and how many knows you hear but you're spot on it oh man you you really end up the more longer you stay in the career, you really end up building a like a level of mental fortitude that's just yeah. essential to be able to battle through all the rejection. Yeah, it's one of those things like you you know you can just kind of approach anything and be like, no, okay. <laughs> it's just like literally okay, <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta be cool. <laughs> like, what happened? He said no. We're, we're good. <laughs> Let's go over there. <laughs> and you spent hours working on it. days. No. Cool, but that, I think that's I think that's also the the other the other caveat of that situation is that a no isn't necessarily a no saying that you're not great at what you do. Mm -hmm. The no is saying that you just don't fit this moment. Like right. in this moment, the person we have you acting beside is two inches shorter than what you would need to be to fit this role. You're two shades lighter than what you need to be to be this person's son. Mm -hmm. Like the casting director doesn't like your agent. Like it's just, it's never really just the fact that your ability isn't there. There's so many different aspects that go into what it is that you do. 
and all of those things have to align for this one thing to work out and then hope that even after filming it, it actually makes it to final cut. Right. So yeah, no, you you are one hundred percent right. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think over time you just learn really to not take it personal. And, yeah, and that's like what's a lot. That's what allows you to be able to just like shrug it off because you're like, oh well, you know, there was other factors. It wasn't me. It was you know, you even if it was you, you just put it on. <laughs> other, you know, just, but me, just yeah, you have to you know for your own confidence. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it couldn't have been me. I, I did great. I killed it. I don't, I don't know what their problem is, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's awesome because at at the same point, there's have you had a project that you really wanted and was told no, and then after you saw, you were like, "I'm glad I didn't get that." Yes, that just happened recently, actually. <laughs> um, <I'll- laughs> I won't say the name of the project. Yeah. But I watched it, man. And I was, whew, that was a bullet there. <laughs> but it's, you know, because you don't know that walking into an audition, it's like, oh, this is going, this sounds great based off of the script. And then all you see, and it's it. like, like, that's what y'all finished with? Ugh, okay. Man, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. God really had a plan. <laughs> the next no is okay for me. Like we're good. You, you're right, right. Yeah. After that, you start, to, you start to really trust that what's for you is for you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So you you hit the scene on um, on Grownish mm-hmm. um, after the amazing series of Blackish, mm-hmm. and pull that same dynamic into this new show. Um, but then you become like the villain and everybody's like, yeah, I know he's not messing with junior. And it's just like, it's as much as everyone wants to like you. It's like, we automatically hate this person because you're messing with junior and junior is like the most innocent, like being period to the world. Um, Very true. um, Was it hard for you to be, the villain of the show, basically. I think I'm, I've am really trained my brain to, like, find empathy for every character I play. So I never really, wow. like... Because you kind of have to, you know? Especially if you're playing characters whose viewpoints you really conflict with. You know, they yeah. really go against your own. You, kinda, you have to find, like, um, a stance to take that makes what they're saying acceptable and justified. Or else... It would just never get out from like a heartfelt space and it will register as inauthentic and, you know, corny. And that's yeah. I mean, that's not what you want to do on like, a, you know, on a very mainstream show. You want to put out your best work. So right. I, for this character, like I really found somebody in my personal life who I felt was very similar to that person. And then I just modeled the character after them. And uh, it was funny because they watched um I think my first episode that I did on the show and they texted me back afterwards and they were like, oh, man, you killed it. And I was like, you don't even know. <laughs> this is you. Right. This is, I'm looking at you a little different now. Like, this is this is really what you would do. Yeah, I bet you did like it. Because <laughs> you were looking in the mirror. <laughs> like, yo, I, I can see myself doing that. That's that's true. That's That's realistic. So what was, I guess, like your your favorite part of being on that set, in that cast? Um, Because I know like the the camaraderie that is is grown-ish is, from my understanding, a lifelong kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, What was your your favorite aspect of being there? Man, I think just like the level of professionalism. um, When you're on a set like that, and, you know, this is like a, a, a Disney show. Um, yeah, but, I mean the budget obviously is crazy. Um, the amenities are are vast, and the treatment is profound. You know, it's all great. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think just like like you said, it's, it's like a legacy to it. And I think with these shows, you don't know what they can mean to people like down the line. So I think like yeah. every time you step on that set, like you really gotta think about the bigger picture. This, I mean, this work is in stone. You know, people could be watching this past the time that you're gone. I could be gone from the earth and people are still watching episodes that I was a part of. So 
you know, with that mentality in mind, you really just come to work with like a certain level of like professionalist and professionalism and trying to just put your best foot forward. But working with a cast like that, I mean, they're, they're those are really, really good like actors and they've been a part of show business for a very long time. So there's always things that you can mm-hmm. kind of learn from them. So every time you're there, it's just like a learning experience. Like every time yeah. I'm there, I'm like, oh, dang, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Oh, wow. OK. So it's just learning nonstop. Yeah. And I was going to say what was like the takeaway, but I'm guessing like the learning part would be the biggest takeaway from the show. Yeah. Yeah. And just like kind of like building that community. Like um, I saw Marcus, who plays Junior, maybe like a couple Mm -hmm. nights ago at an event. And, um, you know, just to be able to see him again, like it kind of like it's like it's just nice, man. It's just you build a community, you know, and and we'll be, you know, having like those those meetups for years. I, I mean, I'll be seeing him for, you know. Who yeah. knows how long? So it's just cool. You just never lose those friendships. Right. The roles start coming in. Like, because now you are you are busy. Um, how does that feel knowing your your journey and now seeing like I'm booked and busy? Mm. Like I I I made it. Or do you feel like you made it? Because sometimes that, that's not what making it feels like. I don't know if you ever really feel like you made it it's just because like you go through so many years of like uncertainty that, mm-hmm. I mean, granted times do get better and you feel maybe a smidgen more comfortable, but you're never really comfortable because you always feel like it could be taken away from you in an instant. Yeah. So I don't know if I ever really feel like I made mm-hmm. it, but I definitely will probably feel increasingly more grateful for the place that I'm at now versus where I started. I, I know for a fact I'm at a whole different place and I'm grateful for that. And I'm very aware of that, but I'd, yeah. I'll never be able to like, just chill. I just, I, at this point I can't, like, I'm just kind of like, just battled through so much like adversity that like my motor now just like won't stop. Yeah. 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 Like again, you're doing, you have your projects, um, hmm. projects and modeling. And it's not like small time modeling. Like this is Adidas, Jordan brand, Calvin Klein, Abercrombie and Finch. Like you're doing the majors. Like these are the Marky Mark brands of acting. So like you're landing all of that. And like everything's just happening at this point. Does it feel weird? for you to like see yourself on a billboard or see yourself in a magazine or like see a commercial pop up and it's like it's me like does it ever get normal nah i don't know if it ever does like it it almost is like sometimes like too good to be true like it almost like takes your brain like a moment to really like take in the fact that it is you that you're seeing you know what i mean yeah you almost think it's like a different entity like outside of yourself yeah um yeah yeah i guess that's the best way i can explain it um like you're like, watching someone else yeah you feel like it's not even you it's i, I understand why people like create like <laughs> stage names and stuff now because it would be <laughs> nice to be able to have like a different persona with a different name that wasn't yeah rant and i could just step in and out of it and be like nah well that's you know, that's my stage that's not me um yeah yeah but but yeah i yeah, I don't know. I, it almost doesn't feel like me. So you have a you have a film coming out, and you were you're actually back in the criminal justice scene. Yeah, kind of. Um, this time, how the world turns. <laughs> yeah, how, <laughs> how the world turns. <laughs> yeah. tell, tell me about that. Um, so it's a film that we shot in Detroit. Uh, the director is from Detroit. Uh, I'm actually from Toledo. So it was okay. cool to kind of be able to like unite forces and uh, and collab on this project. And I stayed at home. So I was at staying at home for the duration of the shooting. And then I would drive to like an hour to set like pretty much every day. But mm-hmm. it, it got a little annoying after time making that drive. But the fact that I could be home was worth it. Yeah. But um, but it's it was very, it's a very interesting shooting process because the it was so emotionally demanding uh just because mm-hmm. like all the the turmoil that my character kind of goes through throughout the film that like 
you can't even really help but not bring it home with me. And mm. like I would be at home like eating before I'm about to drive the set. And my grandma would ask me, like, are you OK? And I'd be like, yeah, wow. I'm fine. Just like and I, you don't even realize your process until someone is with you, because normally when I'm doing this and I'm in L.A., I'm by myself or anywhere. I'm typically I'm by myself when I'm shooting. Yeah. I don't like to be like staying with people and stuff. I like to be in my own world. Yeah. But this time I was surrounded by my family who knows me the best and I was not acting like myself. So they actually brought the awareness to me that like, oh, I really have a process because I've never, yeah. you know, no one's ever been there to be able to to tell me that, oh, you're not acting like normal Grant. Because I thought yeah. I was able to turn it off, but I really, I don't when I'm shooting. I'm I'm pretty much kind of just staying in it. And grandmas don't play that. Like that acting thing can stop today. <laughs> like he, yeah. if you're not okay, this acting thing will stop and you're going to come home. Like it's just... <laughs> <laughs> and there's no argument like nope like no i promise i'm better like we're good i'm promise yeah like, it was right. just the scene i was just preparing like i'm i'm cool yeah yeah that's what I told her. i'm just trying to focus yeah just because you know mm -mm, we need no problems and she's not gonna have it so you the the thing i appreciate the most after again reading through your bio is that even with your acting, you still try to make sure that you're giving back. So mm -hmm. you're working with a few different organizations. Um, you have the Cancer Research Institute, um, Feeding America. You have these institutes that you're working with um, to try to use your your platform, use your your celebrity to mm -hmm. give back and bring awareness to other things. Um, why is that important for you? I think it's just the right thing to do. Um, I think when you're kind of placed in positions of notoriety, that it's only right that you're able to spread awareness to the people in the, the facilities that that kind of need it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just I personally believe that, you know, like God put me in this position to be able to help others. Um, and I plan on doing that in every way that I possibly can. Um, yeah. So, you know, once these organizations kind of reached out, I mean, it was a no brainer for me to get involved with it. Uh, I was already looking for a way to to get involved in some kind of charity that was like near and dear to my heart. So mm -hmm. it just felt right. It just it definitely felt right. I, I tried to as of recently, I've done a lot with Feeding America and it's been awesome. Yeah. Um, I did an interview with um, an icon, basically, in the industry. And he was saying that he feels like this era right now for for young black actors is probably the best that it's ever been. Um, the level of opportunity, the level of exposure, um, the fact that, you know, you're actually getting paid your worth in most situations. Do you feel that same way? Like this is like probably the best era for young black actors? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I was at an event, um, the same one that I was saying that I saw Marcus at, and there were so many prominent young black um, Hollywood actors there. It just kind of made me realize that, oh, man, we are in like a great time, mm -hmm. you know, because 20 to 30 years ago or maybe even sooner, this this wouldn't be the case. Yeah. But um, we are truly in a, a new generation. But I don't know if we fully value it maybe the way that we should just because we're in it. You know, it's, it's yeah. really tough to to value something at its fullest when you're living in it. You're, I mean, you're just kind of spoiled by nature, right? But yeah, right. Um, I, I definitely feel a certain level of gratitude to, you know, the goats, so to say, that have paved the way for us. Whether it be the Lawrence Fishburns or the Denzels or the, you know, the Samuel L. Jacksons. I mean, any of those guys. I, I really, I tip my cap and. I just hope that I could have that same kind of impact for the generation that follows me that they have for me. You know, I, I feel indebted. Yeah. Nice. All right. The last question I'd like to ask everyone. Um, and again, you're, you're, you're kind of still fresh in your, in your success climb of this. Um, when you think of legacy and you think of what is what you want to to leave, what does that look like for you? I think just a memoir of films and work in general that 
is solid, impactful in a positive way and is able to outlive me. I think that's mm-hmm. the thing that I love so much about what I do more than anything is just the fact that any and all of my work could outlive me. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think that there's very few careers in life where your work is in stone and, and anything could be watched years to decades after you're gone. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm very, I'm very aware of being in that a space where that's possible. So I, every time I work, I really just try to give my best effort because I, I want the people who watch it, even after I'm gone, to be able to appreciate it, get something from it. And I just want it to be impactful in whatever way that it manifests, you know? Yeah, no, that's dope. <clears throat> well, again, man, congratulations on on all that you've accomplished. Um, Thank you. I know the I know the journey's not easy. So um, personally, I'm glad you didn't quit. Uh, because you do bring that that energy and that light into the industry. So again, anytime that I actually see someone on television, I understand what that process was. And I salute you for for not giving up and allowing the news to be your motivation to get to where you're going. Oh, man, I appreciate that, man. I really enjoyed this conversation. No, nah, absolutely. Absolutely.